And uh, very the, the first act um, is going to be uh, Tonsil Hockey Revolt. It's by uh, Shane McGrath. Hi, uh, this is an excerpt from the ongoing documentary of my life. It's called Tonsil Hockey Revolt. It's about the time I was denounced in the New South Wales Parliament for a game of spin the bottle I didn't actually get to play. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I promise it's all true. It's, uh, it's the truth, nothing but the truth. Probably not the whole truth, because I'll leave out the bits that make me look a bit bad. So, it starts on my birthday in 2002, at a party called the Daggy Disco, where, this isn't relevant to the story, but I'm going to tell you anyway, I was crowned queen of the disco, for my sick dance moves and bright pink leotard. Awesome. Um, during the party, I had a conversation with my friend Nadia, which I didn't remember when I woke up the next morning. Fortunately, she did. At the time, we were coming up to the, uh, the WTO, the World Trade Organization, was having a mini ministerial conference in Sydney uh, a few months later. There were going to be protests at it. Oh yeah, whoa, we love the WTO. Uh, there were going to be protests, and the protests were going to be boring. We knew that, but you know, my circle of friends, we felt pretty obliged to go anyway, because we were all political and stuff. Uh, and also, we liked fighting with the cops, and that was pretty much what was on the cards. So we were going to go. At the time, the hot thing was to have a block. There was the red block, the green block, the black block, the orange block. Everyone had a block. Apparently, during this drunken conversation, I don't remember, me and Nadia decided we would form a spin the bottle block. The aim of our block would be to play a very large game of spin the bottle. <laughs> so I came to Sydney. I announced at a public meeting the formation of the spin the bottle block, our plans for a mass action game of spin the bottle. Since it was 2002, I was obsessed with Nelly's song, Hot In Here, so our call to action was based on that, and uh, I think it read, it's getting hot in here, so let's fan the flames of discontent with tonsil hockey revolt, turning up the heat until every kiss becomes a Molotov. You want to remember that line, because it'll be important in a couple of minutes. So the first day of the protest, we were scheduled for this max action game of spin the bottle right outside Dimio, the Department of Immigration etc. <laughs> Based on our slogan, tonsil connection, not border protection. <laughs> but I'm not really the craftiest guy, so my attempts to build a giant bottle to spin were, were running a little bit behind schedule. The bottle, when it eventually did get made, it was a little bit taller than me. It was oh, about seven feet. It was kind of, it had a frame made of chicken wire, sculpted in kind of giant bottle shape, covered in acetate that I painted green. Sadly, on the first day of the protests, the paint wasn't dry. You didn't, want to, you didn't want to have to pass on with green paint on your fingers. It was just a bad look. So the second day, we took our bottle out to Homebush, where the, where the conference was taking place. Uh, everyone was very excited to see a seven-foot bottle. I mean, who wouldn't be? We marched it out to the protest site, which was behind some fences the police had put up a couple of hundred metres away from where the actual meeting would take place. So the first thing to do was to try and rip the fences down put the bottle down just for a minute by a tree, ran over and you know, had a little bit of argy-bargy with the police, as you do. <laughs> ran around a lot. When I got back to the bottle, turned out that being trampled by a couple of hundred angry protesters, <laughs> the, my, my chicken wire and acetate bottle just didn't stand up to that. It was, it was ruined. And I thought at the time that that was the end of my career as a spin-the-bottle politician. But, uh, the next day, I was sitting at home with a really bad hangover when my friend Lou called, where she'd been looking up details about the protest on the internet. She had an interesting excerpt from the New South Wales Parliamentary Hansard to read to me. I'm just going to get this bit out because I don't want to misquote the police minister. <laughs> so the Honourable Peter Breen, I think he might be a Greens MP, had asked a, a pretty generic question about why the police had been so aggressive with the protesters. And in answering, the Honourable Mr Costa, who was the police minister at the time, had referred very angrily to Lee Rhiannon of the Greens, who earlier had claimed that she had searched the internet and could not find any threats of violence by the protesters. Well, Mr Costa had done his own search. And I quote, Today I can give the House some more information. A site called Active Sydney runs a messaging system. These are sophisticated protesters. <laughs> They use information technology to cause maximum chaos in the city. 
they are running an SMS messaging service which allows people involved in the demonstration to contact and be informed of where they should do something called spin the bottle. <laughs> because that was the example they used on their website. It wasn't the only thing you'd get information about with their messaging service, but it was one thing. So Michael Costa continues. Then you try and work out what is spin the bottle. <laughs> that is even more intriguing. It says, he he misquotes me a little bit, spin the bottle takes the form of a blockade. The spin the bottle blockade takes on the WTO in a no holds barred fight to the finish and you can join them. I will not read the rest, but it goes on to say, we invite you to join us for the most militant game of spin the bottle ever attempted, turning up the heat until every kiss becomes a Molotov. <laughs> Took some time here to bag the greens a little bit more and then finished. More important are the no to WTO Sydney minutes. This is the meeting they held. It goes through a range of actions that they are preparing. It is all in very brief form, obviously, because they know that somebody like me might get on the web and have a look at these things. But the code is not all that good. Because you can piece it all together. They have organised and endorsed a game of mass action spin the bottle. So these people are prepared for this action. They have defined what spin the bottle is in other postings on the internet. They have come here for violent confrontation. <laughs> I wasn't all that surprised that Michael Costa, given his oddly shaped head, didn't know what spin the bottle was. I was a little bit more surprised that he thought minutes from a meeting were a code. You think you might have come across that before. <laughs> so my career as a spin the bottle politician was reignited and we had a small protest outside the New South Wales Parliament defending the basic right of all human beings to play spin the bottle under any circumstances. <laughs> Four of my friends, as a result of that action, are banned from Parliament House for life. <laughs> and for the next few months afterwards, often whenever there was a protest coming up, however big or small, people would want me to, well, no, are you going to do spin the bottle? Are you going to do spin the bottle? But I didn't want to be typecast, so I never did it again. <laughs> but uh, if anyone wants to get together after the show, I'm available on a personal basis. Thank you. <laughs>